Scientists in Sweden published a new report finding that the messenger RNA contained in the Pfizer vaccine is able to undergo a process known as reverse transcription, where it's converted into the language of DNA and might possibly be incorporated into the human genome, which is a damning report. Now, this is not a editorial piece. This is a scientific study that's been peer-reviewed. It was published within the MDPI journals in the subjournal known as Current Issues in Molecular Biology. The title of the paper is Intracellular Reverse Transcription of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 mRNA Vaccine, which is known as BNT162B2, in vitro in human, human liver cell line. Okay, so what do I think about this after reading this? Well, I'm going to put the paper down and just be real with you. If you were to replace Pfizer messenger RNA with one of the controversial preventative agents that has been shown by some individuals, and I know it's controversial, like hydroxychloroquine or, or ivermectin to reduce disease severity. If you were to replace in the title here, let's just say, for example, that those drugs, those aforementioned drugs had messenger RNA and scientists were able to discover that a piece of that messenger RNA is able to upregulate an endogenous reverse transcriptase enzyme and back convert the messenger RNA into the language of DNA, which let me pause here, that's the wrong direction for the vaccine to go. You want it to go from the language of RNA into the language of protein. That's the intent of the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. When you get this in your deltoid, what is intended to happen is there's this lipid particle known as polyethylene glycol that's containing this highly unstable and fragile messenger RNA. And when that makes its way into your cells, the ribosomes, the protein synthesizing machinery or organelles within your cell, those are intended to then upregulate the transcription of a protein that your body normally doesn't make, known as the spike protein. This, of course, is on the extracellular surface of SARS-CoV-2. This is the very protein that that virus uses to hijack your cell machinery, to enter by way of the ACE2 receptors into your cells and take over your cells and replicate and increase viral load and cause all the damage, right? So we're not wanting that messenger RNA to be back converted by way of the enzyme reverse transcriptase. These scientists recently discovered that. So what are my thoughts here? Well, first of all, as I was going, you know, going to my thoughts, uh, if you were to replace ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine in the title, this would be the number one news story in the entire world. Conspiracy theorists promoting horse, horse dewormer have been, you know, they're wrong because it's a new study finds that it's being reverse transcribed into the language of DNA and therefore there's unknowns about the use of ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine. It would be all over all of the major networks, all of the politicians. In fact, my governor just yesterday was talking down upon Horace Dewormer as he unlifted, you know, reverse the face mask mandates, despite the fact that there's record hospitalizations uh, in the state of Washington, right? So this has become a very political sort of people fall into their buckets, their tribes, their network tribe. And when you raise any questions uh, about immunization, this, that must mean that you, you're an anti-science, anti-Christ type individual. People like myself are just trying to find the truth. We are concerned about the current state of science, and we realize that science is being bastardized by politics. Uh, a lot of politicians are influencing science. The funding is very influenced by political agenda and ideologies, and that's very concerning. So I want to share with you the details of this study and talk about why these biases and why the fact that you haven't heard of this study is the problem. But first, friends, I want to welcome you back. As always, thank you for being here. Thank you for hitting that like button. Look, if you're enjoying this content, there's a few things you can do to really help out our channel and help people like you discover this video. So leave a comment below and share this via text message with a friend. Just say, hey, check out this video. Just see what they think, okay? So that goes a long way. So as I just mentioned, this is a damning report. Uh, and I, look, I think a major issue that we've had with regards to vaccine and the rollout of the vaccine is we've been unable to talk about this. We've been unable to share these things because hitherto you would get deleted, deplatformed, censored, the whole thing for even just mentioning stuff. And that's why I think scientists have been a little bit sort of trepidatious when it comes to even you know publishing research. So they must have had some hint uh, that there was 
an upregulation of this endogenous reverse transcriptase enzyme known as line dash uh, one. And so earlier studies have also shown that just getting the infection itself does upregulate this reverse transcriptase enzyme. So I'm not here to say that if you get natural infection that you may not incorporate some viral DNA. You know, we don't know uh, about that. And so that might be why some people who get the viral infection you have long haul issues or have uh, autoimmunity and autoantibodies created and things like that. Because, you know, if this uh, enzyme is uh, upregulated to, to a significant degree, uh, you could have, you know, changes within cellular metabolism. So those are some things that, that I think are, are worth noting. It's not just, it's not just the vaccines here. It, it seems that there's something really different about this virus. And, I wouldn't even go into that Moderna report and the filing of the patent in 2014, but there's other videos on that that you should check out. Uh, some interesting clues about a genetic sequence that was patented uh, long before the outbreak of the pandemic. So what are the implications here? I think what, again, one thing we've done very wrong is how we've rolled out this vaccine by saying that every single person, man, woman, child, no matter their age, needs to get this and a booster shot. Uh, if there is any potential unknowns or uncertainty or unintended harms that we hitherto didn't really know about, well, we should have stratified and continue, we sh should continue to stratify the rollout of the immunizations based upon uh, individuals' age and risk factors. So if you're 65 and you're morbidly obese and you're hypertensive and pre-diabetic, it's probably in your best interest to get the vaccine, right? But if you've already had the virus and you have proof of natural immunity and it was a mild case and so forth and you're young and healthy, you know, do you really want to roll the dice with potentially, you know, unknowns? I mean, this is a thing that it should be very personal. It should not be mandated by the government. It should not be forced upon you by society or some guru uh, on network TV or family members. And this is the problem, my friends. This is the crux of the problem is that the media has created so many network tribes here and it's this us versus them. If you're not vaccinated, you are the reason why there's still a pandemic. You are the reason for the variants, the whole thing, which is totally not true. Uh, we know that immunized people are still getting the virus, right? This is not a conspiracy anymore. And there were people that were a little bit trepidatious when it comes to taking a new technology, and it turns out that their uh, intuition, their hunch, they had some validity here. We now have the say, the evidence over two years later. So we were calling those people, uh, you know, promoters of the pandemic. They didn't care gra about grandma or society or humanity because they had some uncertainty about the, the delivery system or the platform of this new technology. So, so we fired them. We ostracized them from society. We said, you cannot go, uh, you cannot travel. You cannot enter different countries. Um, you cannot attend universities. Uh, you, you, the, the whole thing, you know, this is insane. This is insane. We did all that. Then, then we still allowed infectious healthcare workers to treat the medically fragile amongst us. This was happening all over the country, okay? During the Omicron peak, okay, in January of 2022, there was a lot of doctors that complied and due to labor shortages, there was a shortage of doctors and they were still infectious with COVID. They were ordered by their medical uh, establishments to still treat medically fragile people. And this is the insanity that has sort of uh, epitomized the entire pandemic. Weird decision after weird decision. And if we start to see more and more papers coming out showing that there are Things that you know we didn't know about with regards to reverse transcriptase and uh, you know back converting of messenger RNA into DNA or changing of the CD147 receptors. Like there's a lot of different papers that I've been reading for fear of censorship. I haven't actually shared with you, unfortunately, uh, because of course you know even just sharing these academic articles are, are setting you up for censorship, which is insane. We should be able to share peer-reviewed studies on platforms like YouTube. I mean, that's insane that we can't. So my friends, what do I think about this? Well, if you've already had the vaccine, there's not much you can do about it. I wouldn't suggest worrying, okay? Worrying about this and thinking this and thinking, oh my gosh, what do I have some sort of, that's not gonna serve you, okay? That's, that's not going to help the situation. You can manifest disease. Do not worry about that. Do not think about that. Going forward, you should really evaluate and, and there should be an artificial intelligence or some sort of online calculator where you can 
input, your age, your blood pressure, your glucose, like we should be able to have this to determine whether or not you're even uh, in a category that would warrant uh, necessity of reducing uh, the the potential of severe disease, right? We, we should have been rolling out the immunizations based upon that. And that's, that's, you know, my stance, I could be wrong on that. But if you look at cases and, and deaths uh, per capita and, and, and compare those, you know, counties that have low vaccination rates compared to high vaccination rates. If you look in Massachusetts, you know, outside of Boston, if you look in LA, uh, if you look at Vermont, right, heavily vaccinated areas, they still had a massive surge in Omicron. Uh, and so, again, this is where I feel, and I could be wrong on this, and this is where I'm infusing my opinion, the rollout should have been based upon age and disease severity uh, potential, right? So, um, it's crazy that you haven't heard about this because like I said in closing, um, if it was shown that in tissue culture that the ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine were back converted into the language of DNA, again, in a hepatic cell line, and that, and, and that administration of those drugs was able to increase the activity of the enzyme responsible for back converting RNA into DNA, possibly incorporating that genomic material into your own genome, this would be the number one trending news story in the entire world. But you haven't even heard about this. In fact, I bet you some people who share this study are going to get their YouTube accounts deleted, which is just insanity. We should be able to talk about science. And that's why I've covered COVID-19 so extensively over the past 24 months because you know, my business, my whole platform is based upon sharing peer-reviewed data. And if YouTube becomes the arbiter of truth and the arbiter of science and Facebook determines that they know more about research than the researchers themselves, right? Remember the British Medical Journal recently fact-checked, I'm sorry, Facebook fact-checked BMJ. This is insane. This is, some of the authors of the Danish mask study that didn't show, this was one of the only randomized placebo control, well, there was, there was a, police, a control group and a uh, intervention group uh, masking study that was published in November of 2020. This was censored by all the, the, the authors of this study. Some of the authors, Carl Ennenberg, I think is his name. He is a part of the evidence-based medicine group over at Oxford. Okay, this, this is not like a chump, right? This is not some guy trying to make it in life. He's already made it up to the upper echelons of scientific, you know, uh, sort of circles. He was censored for sharing his own study, finding that face masks didn't significantly reduce the number of cases uh, in the intervention group compared to the non-masking group. So uh, we have seen so much censorship of science, and it's really dis concerning for me. Uh, it, it's a problem. So again, in closing, am I super concerned about this? I think it, it raises, it's a little bit of a red flag. Okay. I've seen a few different studies uh, that show that there are off-target effects with regards to uh, potentially the messenger RNA and the mRNA vaccine. So um, I share this with friends and family, and I just say, "Hey, you got to you got to weigh the risks and the benefits. You know, what are the what are the downsides of of getting it versus the downsides of not getting it? Now, if you're elderly, if you're medically frail, fragile, if you have underlying health conditions, um, the evidence weighs in your favor to get immunized. Now, if you're young, if you're six years old and you've already had COVID, the evidence, you know, I think we should be more prudent going forward about risk factors and age, and also consider the other factors that we can do with regards to reducing disease severity and probability of landing in the hospital. Exercise, nutrition, sleep, stress management, walking, nature, vitamin D, all those things should be part of the equation. What do you think? What do you think about this study? If you have read it, let me know your thoughts there. And as always, thank you for tuning in this video, and we will catch you on a future one down the road. Bye now.